In this video, I will show you how to interpret a differential equation. In other words, we will answer questions relating to a differential equation. I will also show you how to make a slope field. Number one, let f be a solution to the differential equation dy dx equals 2x over y. Before I even go on from there, a solution to a differential equation means getting y by itself. So y equals some function of x, that will be the solution. For part a, describe all parts of the xy plane where the line tangent to f is horizontal. Let's just start there. Well, if it is a horizontal tangent line, that means the derivative must equal zero. So dy dx will equal zero. So let's find out where 2x over y is equal to zero. A fraction can only equal zero when the numerator equals zero. So that means when 2x is equal to zero. Dividing both sides by two, and we have x is equal to zero. Also, what about y? Well, y just can't be zero because that would make it undefined. So y cannot equal zero. These are the two conditions under which we will have a horizontal tangent line. Let's move on to the middle part. Under what circumstances will f have a vertical tangent line? f will have a vertical tangent line when the derivative is undefined. And that will happen when y is equal to zero, but x cannot also equal zero. Note, if x and y are both zero, then dy dx will equal zero over zero. This is an indeterminate form, and it does not mean that you have a vertical tangent line. So under what circumstances will f have a positive slope? Well, that just means that the derivative will be positive. In other words, 2x over y will be greater than 0. But this will happen any time that x and y have the same sign. In other words, when x is positive and y is positive, or when x is negative and y is negative. Part B. On the axes provided, sketch a slope field for dy dx equals 2x over y using the 25 indicated points. Note, one point shouldn't get a segment at all. Think about why that would be the case. If dy dx is equal to 2x over y, then at the point negative 2 comma 2, we have 2 times negative 2 divided by 2. But that's negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. dy dx is the slope. So at this ordered pair, we should have a slope of negative 2 on our slope field. Because it's negative, make sure you draw a segment with a decreasing slope and make it pretty steep because it's negative 2. Similarly, at the point negative 1 comma 2, we have 2 times negative 1 over 2, which equals negative 1. So still a decreasing slope, but not as steep. It should be looking like a 45 degree angle. At the point 0 comma 2, we have 2 times 0 divided by 2, which is 0. Since the slope is 0, we should draw a horizontal segment. Let's think about all of the other points that have this x value of 0. At 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0, negative 2, the slope will be 0, 0, and 0. So all of those should be horizontal segments on the slope field. But what about the point 0, 0? At the point 0, 0, we have 2 times 0 divided by 0 which equals 0 over 0. This is an indeterminate form, and it does not mean that the curve is vertical. 
so we can't put any segment at all. At the point 1 comma 2, we have 2 times 1 divided by 2, which equals 1. So we draw a segment with a positive slope at a 45 degree angle. At 2 comma 2, we get 2 times 2 over 2, which equals 2. So positive slope, it should look steeper than the last point. At the point negative 2 comma 1, the slope is negative 4. So this should be decreasing and quite steep. At negative 1 comma 1, the slope is negative 2. At 1 comma 1, the slope is positive 2. At 2 comma 1, the slope is positive 4. At negative 2 comma 0, we have 2 times negative 2 divided by 0. This is undefined. That means that the function would be vertical at this point. This is going to be the case at all of these points on the x-axis where the y value is 0, again with the exception of the origin, which gives us the indeterminate form. At negative 2 comma negative 1, the slope is positive 4. At the point negative 1 comma negative 1, the slope is 2. But now that I think about it, that should be the same all along this diagonal. So I, I could have taken a shortcut and just, brrr, just filled in all of these. But at the point negative 2 comma negative 2, the slope should also be positive 2. At the point 1 comma negative 1, the slope is negative 2. And I should realize that all along this downward sloping diagonal, the slope should be negative 2. All of these points where the x value and the y value are the same, except for one is positive and one is negative. So both of these two points should have a slope of negative 2. At the point 2 comma negative 1, the slope is negative 4. At the point negative 1 comma negative 2, the slope is 1. And at the point 1 comma negative 2, the slope is negative 1. And that's how you make a slope field. Part C. On the axes provided, sketch the particular solution y equals f of x that goes through 1 comma 2. The point 1 comma 2 is here. As I follow the slope and I'm heading down, but looking ahead, I see by the time I get here, I need to be at a horizontal slope like these are. So I'm sort of bending as I come in to here. And looking ahead, uh, the slope is going to bend back up by the time I get over here. So I'm going to start bending my curve back up in that direction. So I get the idea. This is uh, sort of like a parabola type of a shape. Part D, find the equation of the line tangent to the graph of the particular solution of f at 1 comma 2, then graph this tangent line on the axes provided. Once we have a slope field, writing the equation of a tangent line is easy. We will use point slope form, where all we need is a point, x1 comma y1, and the slope, m. So, we already have the point 1 comma 2. So right away, that allows us to write y minus 2 is equal to, and I'm, I'll leave space for the slope, and then x minus 1. So all we need is the slope at the point 1 comma 2. But the point 1 comma 2 is right here, and we determined that the slope was 1. So we didn't even really need to write that. To make the tangent line easier to graph, let me add 2 to both sides. I get y equals x plus 1. That means 1 is the y-intercept, and the slope is 1. So here is the line tangent to f at the point 1 comma 2. Part E, verify that y equals the square root of 2x squared plus 2 is a solution of the differential equation dy dx equals 2x over y. I can turn y into dy dx by taking the derivative. If I take the derivative of both sides of the equation, I should get 2x over y. Let's see. 
let's think of this as 2x squared plus 2 to the 1 half power. So if I take the derivative of both sides, I'm going to use the chain rule. So first I will have 1 half times 2x squared plus 2 to the negative 1 half power, but I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So that'll be 4x. Keep an eye on the 1 half in the front. I'm going to write it kind of big. This 4x on the end is going to end up in the numerator. And in fact, at that point, I don't need the 1 anymore. I see that the 2x squared plus 2 has a negative exponent. So it's going to drop down to the denominator. And I can write it as the square root of 2x squared plus 2 Again, that's kind of where it came from. Notice that the 2 and the 4 will reduce. So now I have this. But notice that y equals the square root of 2x squared plus 2. And that's what I see right here. So I can replace this with y. Since dy dx does equal 2x over y, we have verified that this is a solution to the differential equation. Number two, let function g be the particular solution to dy dx equals 2x over y that goes through 4 comma negative 1. Part a, write the equation for the line tangent to y equals g of x at 4 comma negative 1. To write the equation of the tangent line, we will use point slope form. So all we need is a point and the slope. Since they gave us the point of tangency, 4 comma negative 1, we now have a point. So all we need is the slope. Of course, we can find the slope using the derivative. So let's find the derivative at the point 4 comma negative 1. So this will be 2 times 4 over negative 1, which is negative 8. Now that we have a point and the slope, we can use it to write this equation of the tangent line. Part B, use this tangent line to approximate g at 4.1. I think it will be easier if we get y by itself first. So let's bring down the y plus 1 equals Distributing the negative 8, we have negative 8x plus 32. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get y equals negative 8x plus 31. So to approximate g at 4.1, we just need to evaluate y at x equals 4.1. So that'll be negative 8 times 4.1 plus 31. So g at 4.1 is approximately equal to negative 1.8. Part c. Given that g double prime of x is greater than 0 everywhere on its domain, determine whether the approximation you just found is an overestimate or an underestimate of g at 4.1 justify your answer. We know that g of x is concave up everywhere because g double prime is greater than zero. And if a function is concave up, then the tangent line will always give an under approximation because the tangent line will always be below the curve. So the tangent line approximation is an underestimate because g of x is always concave up.